Hi everyone, is your coffee ready? Welcome back to another paper. This time we are talking about scaly up GANs for text to image synthesis. It is a GAN that generates images from text. And what is nice about this paper is that you can generate those high quality, as you can see here, high quality images using a GAN. And since it's a GAN, it's pretty fast. You can generate 500 pixel output images at 0.13 seconds or 5000 pixel images in 3.7 seconds. So this is pretty impressive. Also, you can use it to do upsampling. And as you can see here, they compare to stable diffusion on the right. And you can see how they improve the quality by using their upsampler. And this can be done on top of images generated by diffusion models or on real images. So this is pretty neat. Also on those speeds that I talked earlier in 3.16 seconds. So everything is in this paper. So let's see how it works. As you may expect, we have again, so we have a generator and a discriminator. So let's start with the, uh, the generator. So here you have the diagram of the generator and it is based on style again. So what you have, you have the generator as usual and you have a mapping network. The mapping network is similar to the style again in the sense that we have, we start with a latent code, but here we have also another input. And this input comes from a pre-trained text encoder and a learned text encoder. What does it do? It takes a text, for example, this, and it generates the embeddings using clip, clip which is already uh, frozen, and then it passes to another network that is uh, free to learn. And then you have two T's. You have T local and T global. T local is the embedding for each word on the input text. This will be used as a here to modulate each of the cross attentions. And the T global is, as the name says, the global context of the, the sentence. So the mapping network takes this T global and the latent code and generates a style code W. This W is used as a, again, uh, as a modulator for the convolutions. So we have here, here, and also it's used to modulate the self attention. Okay, so the layers of the generator are can be split into three parts, those here. The convol it's a convolution, a self-attention, and cross-attention. The convolutions are not the what you usually expect. They are actually based on a kernel selection. What, what it means is that you take the W, the style code, and you use it to filter, or actually take a filter uh, from a filter bank, and generate a modulated weight. So instead of having a convolutional filter, you have a bank of filters, and then you use W, and basically it's, it will give you a average sum of the filter bank. So what, this, what it does is for each image that you have as input, or for each text, you have a specific combination of those weights. So this gives the network more power to be able to generate more diverse samples. That's what the authors say. So you have this as convolutions. The self-attentions, they give you this global context, which the convolutions don't provide sometimes. So like convolution, it, 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 it works only on predefined local windows and the self-attention gives you a context, more uh, broader context. And then you have the cross attention. And what the cross attention does is to help ne the network to use the entire context of the sentence throughout the entire image. So you have all the words being seen by all the layers of the network. And finally, another interesting aspect is that they generate a pyramid of images. It's not a single output. This will be used later to, for the, with the discriminator to better discriminate on multiple levels and the, the authors claim that it improves the performance. So let's talk now about the losses to train this network. 
They have three losses to train it. The first one is the multiscale input, multiscale output adversarial loss. It is composed of two sub losses, the GAN and the match aware loss. The GAN loss is the standard non saturating GAN loss, so nothing new here. And the match aware loss is a loss to prevent a network to just generate realistic images, especially in the early stages of the training, and ignore the conditioning on the text. So what happens is that the discriminator simply ignores it and, uh, it, and then later it, it simply doesn't catch on. So to solve that, what the authors propose is to give a fake pair composed of a ground true image and a randomly sample conditioning C. So basically you give an image of a realistic cat, but then you give a text that says dog. So the network will say, okay, this is realistic, but doesn't match. So it will have a penalty on this loss here. So that's a simple way to make the network understand that not only it has to be real, but it also has to match the text that is given as input. The second loss is the contrastive loss. So here they just use the clip model and uh, they force the generator to produce um, outputs that are identif identifiable by clip. So this is a pretty standard as well. And they have also a vision-aided adversarial loss where they freeze the clip encoder and then they extract features from the layers. So they take the input and they pass it through the, this clip and they train a network that uh, predicts real and fake predictions. So that's basically how it, how it works. And that's how they get it. They have those three losses that are together with some with some weights and that's how they train the network. Now, the less interesting part is the app sampler. This app sampler can be used on top of other networks, let's say a stable diffusion, or it can use on top of a real image that is just too small. And to do that, they have a unit architecture that is asymmetric. So they start, let's say with 64 pixels and then they ups, down sample it first and then they upsample it and then they can get, for example, to a 512 resolution. And of course they use skip connections because we all know that this is really important. They use the LPIPS loss and they, for, they ignore the visionated GAN. So basically that's how they basically can have the network to generate high resolution images. And also they, yes, they apply a moderate Gaussian noise to reduce this gap between real and GAN images. So it helps on the training of the discriminator and the generator. So as you can see, that's basically the idea of the paper. You have these beautiful images in the end. And uh, technically speaking, uh, I think I cover most of the important parts. They also talk about the initialization, which is really important. And this is, uh, this is the reason since we are talking about GAN. So initialization, taking care of the weights or the distribution of the weights of the variables is really important. And that's it. I hope you enjoy it and see you next time. Now let's see how the discriminator works. We have a figure for that here. So the discriminator works by taking this pyramid of images as input and it takes each one and process and then outputs this to a second level of the, or the next layer of the discriminator. So you can see here it takes the big one and then generates an output. And this output is, or the, the output is provided with the downscale version of the of the generator since it generates many and at the same time it has the text conditioning so it not only has to generate realistic images but it also has to obey what the text is saying so in every layer you have a out an output this is really interesting you don't have a single prediction you have multiple so you can see here on the right that it produces a, an output resolution of 32, 16, 8, 4, and 1. So the network can make multiple predictions and probably focus on more high-level 
features at the um, at the low resolution and also on small and more localized features on a bigger resolution.